Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. Can you guys hear me okay? I have two Samanthas. Sam okay, great. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it very much. Um, happy Monday. We were just chatting a little bit about um, the nice weekend. Did you want to share anything that you were able to do? Oh, goodness, what a, what a gift this has been to have the sun shine out and the snow melting. I get, I'm guessing that's what you guys are having wherever you are, too. So like I said in the chat, I'm hoping spring is here to stay, although I love to ski. Um, I still uh, find this encouraging. Um, anybody have um, AC, uh, your ACT testing tomorrow? Do you, either of you test for that? Anybody? So I wish anybody who listens to this um, as a recording, I wish what well, you guys do. Okay, um, you do. So I wish you well on that. Um, so I know that that um, feels like a lot of pressure, but just try to relax and do your best on that. And it just leads, you know, everything that you've worked hard at um, will come together tomorrow for you, I'm sure. Um, so this week, we are any questions I should ask? Any questions leading up till today? You guys are doing a good job. Work's coming in for everybody, so that's awesome. People are remembering how to submit, so that's good. So this week, we are going to um, do two different things. We are going to build off of last week's lesson and chapter, and then we're going to move into a new chapter. So um, this week's on citizenship and families. So with regard to your summative for the week, you are going to view some videos on being a good citizen. An important thing as you um, are at the age that you are in high school and being aware of your um, surroundings and other people and then um, embarking on adulthood. And then your summative is on on citizenship. So I would encourage you to still look at chapter five for the summative. Um, many people do just fine on the first part of it. And then on the last question, they, they, that's where they get um, kind of bit. So for the last question, let's look at that. I, I guess I'll just keep going here. And then, um, so you have a summative. I'm gonna go over that next. And then you will read chapter six understanding families, and there's a formative quiz. And next week, we'll talk more about families. And we're going to introduce that today. So your summative for this week relates to chapter five that you read last week. And this has to do with volunteering. So the chapter spent a lot of time on volunteering. Use that as a reference so that you're answering in, um, you, you know, that steers your answer toward what I'm looking for. So two factors you should consider, then tell how you will benefit. So this is absolutely personal. And so talk about the many benefits of volunteering, okay? And then talk about um, one way that should not be hyphenated, one way volunteering might help you identify your future career goals and be sure to explain that. And then talk about how volunteer organizations um, are necessary and how they benefit a community. So again, look at your chap your textbook to steer you on this one. That's really what I'm looking for. And talk about um, so and do a good discussion on that. So don't do a list. You, know, you need to discuss that. And then here's the one where a lot of people uh, get messed up. Good citizenship goes beyond volunteering. In one to two paragraphs, discuss what being a good citizen means to you, what uh, what it is, and what is expected of you. And then your behaviors. It should say what. Um, what it is and what it will be expected of you, your behaviors, your responsibilities. So section 5.1. So chapter five, the first section talks about citizenship and it talks about um, the responsibilities of a citizen. So make sure you're referencing that for your summative. And then after that, you're going to do the chapter, read chapter six and take the formative. So today we're going to talk uh, about families. Any question on that summative? And I, sometimes I think people are a little confused because this week is kind of half last week and half going into next week. Okay. So again, for the summative, 
take a look at chapter five from last week and look at that. Okay, so what makes up a family? What are some ideas that you have about what makes up a family? What do you think? Any ideas on that? Group of people, right? Living together, right? Those kinds of things. Any idea about how you would define it? What makes up family? We're going to talk about family structure specifically today. Okay? So there are family types. And so really, uh, families are, you know, are groups that live together and they have um, common goals and they help each other. And um, they, yeah, there you go, work together, loving each other. They can be related by blood, marriage, adoption, right? Um, and so that definition emphasizes the structure. And then sometimes we use the word family to define roles, responsibilities, rights, and relationships, okay? So um, like at, at school when I teach um, and we have cooking class, I always think of us as a little family, right? We are working together. We have common goals. We need to treat each other well, right? And when you work somewhere, you become kind of a family with your roles, how you interact. We're going to focus on um, families in that first sense with how our, we're related um, and our roles and our, and, um, and our, the ways families are set up. Okay, so here are some family types. When we think about families, usually we think of this as people that share um, share a relationship um, or the living arrangement, right? Biological, and then we go through life kind of together. Okay, so there used to be only four family types, and now they used to just talk about four main types, even though the other types have always existed. Um, it was so prevalent that the four types, most people fit into the four types, most families. So those were the four main ones. Now, with the number of people and with just different things that have gone on in our societies and worldwide, um, we recognize that there are many more than four family types. So one is called the nuclear family. Anybody ever heard of a nuclear family? Whenever I teach this um, at face-to-face, -face, kids think it sounds like a big explosion. They feel like, <laughs> right? No, you haven't? Okay. So a nuclear family is um, a man, a woman, and their children. Okay. So it's for the, it's the, um, it's historically been the main family type mom, dad, kids, nuclear family, okay? Um, a solid base for human relationships, and um, adults are role models for the children, so nuclear family. I always kind of think of this, remembering this one as a cell. When you think of the nucleus in a cell, right, you have that main, um, main uh, functioning part, right? And so that's how the nuclear family has historically been seen. It's the main um, unit in society to protect children, um, to help nurture them, help them developmentally. And then um, there are another uh, family type is called single parent family. And so just as it sounds, just one parent in a family. OK, so what are some reasons families can end up being a single parent family? where there's just one parent parenting a, a child or children. Lots of different ways this can happen. Um, divorce is one. Good. Other ways? Yes. So family, a uh, couple marry, they decide to divorce. And it can be single family in two homes or one home or, uh, you know, both of the homes. So... Um, when I was a little girl, my dad died, so that's another way. Um, somebody can be widowed and end up a single parent. People don't um, generally plan on that happening, but it can happen. Some people never marry, right? Some people have children and never marry. Um, sometimes even at separation, if there's not a divorce, it might be separation where they haven't formalized or they might be heading toward divorce. But those are some reasons that there are single parent families. Okay. And again, the function is the same to provide for the family members and 
to nurture um, children and to help them develop and um, to provide for the needs. And so same goals. Now, extended family, any idea what that one might be? So think of the family unit and then think of it extended. So what that might mean. Oh, you're adopted. Awesome. So um, if you have a mom and dad in the family, that would still be a nuclear family. I love that. So you're gonna, we're going to get to adopted families here. Thank you for noticing that. Um, extended family. Anybody know what that one would be? So you've got a family, whatever it looks like, whatever type of family. How could you have an extended family? So it, a lot of families have shifted to this um, perfect example. Great job. A lot of families have had to make shifts in the last year with uh, the pandemic. And so we have actually we have many more extended families than we've um, than we've typically had. And we've always been increasing in those. Some societies always have had extended families. It's part of the culture. So, yes, it means that there are other um, just like it sounds like extended family members. So it could be grandparents that live with the family. It could be cousins. It could be aunts, uncles. Um, when my children were little, my brother um, moved in with us and he graduated from high school and he moved in with us. And so we were an extended family. Lots of benefits to that. So for instance, um, we would put the kids to bed and then my husband and I could go out on a date or out to dinner or whatever. And it was kind of like a built-in babysitter. Um, not too long ago, my brother told me the kids never, ever woke up. So it was so we didn't have to pay a babysitter. We didn't have to drive one home. He was just there. Yep, exactly right. So a lot of families have grandmas and grandpas, right? Aunts, uncles. Um, a lot of families are combining households now if, if, with to save expenses or because of loss of job or loss of loss of housing, those kinds of things. So that's an extended family when you bring in other family members into your family or join another family. Step families. What are step families? What's a step family? Yes, exactly right. Well stated, Alexis. Yes. So in those, uh, uh, mo most often it's one of the single parent family types. And so it can be remarriage. Um, it can be, um, again, somebody's widowed and then uh, families join together. It can be uh, divorced or never married and then married somebody else. And it's when there are children that have a new parent and or new siblings. Those are called step families. Mm -hmm. Yep, it could be brothers and sisters. Exactly right. And so a step family, a, a Brady, the Brady Bunch, if you've ever seen that, is a really good example of that, um, where, they're, where they're a step family. Um, the mom had three kids. The dad had th three girls. The dad had three boys. Um, and the theme song sums it up pretty well. A blended family is the same kind of idea, except um, usually this is defined that the, the, fa the step family it functions as a family. So they feel like they're a family unit. So in a way, it's kind of the next, um, the next level of being a step family where you really function as one family. You're blended together. All right, families with adopted children. Um, Catherine just mentioned that. So those also can be many different reasons. And so very personal, um, great stories about this. Um, um, sometimes adopted children know their biological parents. Sometimes they do not. Sometimes, um, you know, sometimes parents die and somebody takes kids in as their own. Adopted means that the parents have, have agreed to take the children, child or children in as their own, just like they were their own biological children. They're taking them on for life. So it's, I always think it's awesome. So I know years ago, I, um, taught a, a young girls group and there was one girl that was adopted and she was from Korea and she had other siblings in the family that were biological um, to the parents and she was always a little bit uncomfortable and 
I remember just one time I said to her, what an amazing thing that you were like picked up from the other side of the world and brought here to this family, handpicked and wanted and chosen. And so that's really my idea of it. I, I do feel that that helped her. Um, she was just a young, uh, really young girl. And so I've seen her since. And I, I often wonder if it just helped to reframe that thought. To me, adoption is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so a foster family, anybody know what a foster family is? So this is different than adopted. Foster families, anybody want to mention that, define it? So adopted, adoption, um, yes. So they, a family takes, um, sometimes they do it with animals. And yes, very, very true. Um, so with for our purposes here, it would be with children, child or children, and a foster family is meant to be a temporary situation. So it's when there's some sort of crisis generally where um, a child or children need a stable home, um, a stable environment, they need their needs met. Um, and so a family it has set up to be a called a fa foster family and they can take in a child. So sometimes there are families that will take in a child um, or children and then, oh, okay, okay, love that. So a lot of, that's a really good distinction, Catherine. Many times foster children are taken in um, and the parents decide to adopt them. So another beautiful illustration. Um, so, um, initially, foster families, though, are meant to be temporary, hopefully, to get children um, back to the parents. Um, sometimes um, there can be all different kinds of things, maybe an accident or somebody gets sick and children are kind of displaced. And foster families are recognized by the community and um, they know that they're safe places for kids to, to go. And so generally the goal of foster families is to reunite with, um, with birth parent or parents, but um, for many different reasons that isn't always possible. Okay. Um, what about families with guardians? So you might remember me saying that I am actually my grandson Mason's um, legal guardian. Families with guardian. So what does that mean, guardian? So like a foster family, you know, temporary, um, adopted, long-term. A guardian means that I act as a parent and I had to go through the court system to be appointed. So I can make decisions. I can um, take, I, well, not only can I, but I I'm supposed to make decisions. Um, I can take Mason to the doctor and sign for that. He's on my health insurance. I can sign him up for school and daycare, which I have. Um, and I provide for all of his needs. I love him um, and have taken him in. And so it's a position where I'm legally in the role of a parent, but I'm not a parent. Okay. So, um, so I haven't adopted him, and I'm, and so I haven't taken him on like he is. You know, I've taken him on like he's my child, but I haven't adopted him, so it's not official, um, officially like like it would be adopted. Okay, um, and then I haven't taken him temporarily, so he's not a foster child. I am still a family with. I'm a grandparent family. Um, because I am the grandparent, but sometimes grandparents take in their kids and um, and it could be just temporary and maybe the parents still have the parental rights. So for me, it's different. Guardians have the right um, with, to make decisions for the kids. Um, a lot of times it has to do with health care and sometimes it's also financial. Um, and so are those family types clear to you? Is that helpful? Any questions on any of them? Anybody? Okay, awesome. All right. Um, so families, whatever type they are, and I should mention, the family types can change. So when I was a little girl, right, when I think about my parents were nuclear parent uh, family, mom, dad, um, and I had a, sis had a sister, and so we were a nuclear family at one point, and then my dad 
died, and so my mom was a single parent family, and then my mom remarried, so I had a stepfather, and then they had children, so then we became a blended family, right? So lots of different family types, and even through my adulthood, um, very different t family types, okay? So you can transition because, you know, things happen in life, and sometimes there are changes and uh, transitions, and and so you just be, so no family is, I will say no one family is better than another. They are all meant to function um, in a way that uh, provides for the needs of the family members and helps nurture and helps the development of every family member. So think about your family um, and think about what stage you might be in. So the beginning stage of a family is when a couple marry. That's the beginning stage of a family. And so um, they, it's a married couple with no children, okay? Childbearing is from the first time um, the wife is pregnant and expecting a child until they've had all the children they plan to have. All the ch uh, children are born. Now, sometimes a family thinks they're done with the childbearing stage and they enter the parenting stage. Parenting stage is where they have children that are um, still under the age of 18, couple with children, and they are, the, they are parenting the children, right? And so underage children. So sometimes they're in that stage and all of a sudden might find out that they're having or expecting another baby and can be kind of back to that childbearing stage, right? Have you known families that have had that happen? Right, and so then um, when they're done having children, though, they're officially in the parenting stage. Um, anybody know what the launching stage is? So this is when children are, when you think of launching, you think of like kind of, right? Uh, what do you think of launching? When you think of kind of shooting out, right, from the main base, shooting out that's what launching is so when the children are starting to leave the home that's called the launching stage okay so when they go off to college or move out on their own get an apartment that's the launching stage so i know there's one movie called failure to launch i haven't seen it for a while um so i can't speak to it i'm pretty picky on movies and the content in them um i i don't remember anything that was um not worth viewing in it, um, but it was all about a grown up man who the parents could not get to leave home. So it was called, it is called failure to launch. A lot of times they talk about um, adult children that don't leave the home. Um, many uh, young adults or, you know, whatever age adults have moved back with their home. So I know a lot of memes are out there about this. Have you guys seen those where, you know, grown, grown, men and women living at home, sitting on the couch, that kind of thing, aged parents. So um, launching is when um, adult children leave the home. Okay, then the mid-year stage is when the couple's independent children are living away from home. So the kids are independent, they're adults, they live away from home. That's when the family's in the mid-year stage. So it would be generally in their maybe late 40s, 50s, could be 60s, that kind of thing. And then when the couple are older, that would be called the aging stage. So that's during retirement until the death of the spouses. They're in the aging stage. Okay. Anybody know what family your stage your family's in? Should be pretty obvious. What family? And if this really relates more to your parents than it does with you guys. Uh, 50 is still in parenting. Okay, yeah, so good. Parenting, so in parenting stage, that's where most would land. If you have siblings that have moved out, your parents might be in entering that launching stage. They might be in parenting and launching together. So my kids had all moved out as adults. So um, I ha had already been in the mid-year stage, and now I'm back in the parenting stage. So does that make sense? With um, Yep, with Mason. And so something I didn't expect, I love it, but you can see how 
um, these are just not, you know, not um, set in stone kinds of things. You don't move necessarily move from one to the other. Um, it's just whatever, you know, life, um, wherever life takes you and everything's okay. It's just meant to give you an idea where you're at, right? So when I you think of me um, in the parenting stage, that gives you a little glimpse into my life, right? And if you thought right now that I was in the mid-year stage, you would have a different view of my life, right? Um, I'm not in the aging stage yet. Um, so that's uh, those are those stages that I've been in. So I, I thought I was entering mid-year mid stage, which I was, but right back to parenting stage, okay? And so launching stage won't come for a really long time. <laughs> so all good. All right, functions of a family. So these are things that, that you've just heard me mentioning. Um, that the family unit has uh, has a function of taking care of its members um, and providing for nurturing. Nurturing is a big word. Okay, so procreation. Have you heard of that word? Procreation. It's a really important word when you're thinking about families. Okay, so you know what creation is, right? to create, to make something. So procreation is a fancy word for having babies. So it is, um, it's kind of like thinking of um, things that reproduce after their own kind, right? That's procreation. So a living thing that creates something after its own kind. So for humans, it's having babies. That's procreation, okay? So that is a function of a family. The physical care. So physical has to do with our, what do you think physical? So the care of us, each of us physically. So our, when we think of physical, we think of our bodies. Great job. So really, we have home to take care of, right? To shelter us from the elements when it was cold all winter, or when it gets too hot in the summer, right? We've got some shade. We've got a place to put our things to lay uh, on a bed to go to sleep. Um, we've got food in our house, right? Things that we take care of our bodies. We can exercise, right? We can sit down. We have clothes. All of those physical things. We take a vitamin that's in, in our cupboard. Those kinds of things for our body. Socialization. What does that refer to? So we take our, care of our bodies, and then socialization has to do with So I always think of my phone. If I used it only for, yeah, there you go. So socialization has to do with other people. So I, I always think of social media, right, or a social device. If I had my phone and only used it as a way to take a list, or you know to check the date on the calendar or to use the calculator would it be a social device or would it be a social technology piece it would not right i would i wouldn't be doing anything with other people so to make something social you have to have other people so even within our own homes we learn how to communicate we learn how to get along we talk to each other um, we learn to kind of work around other people's moods and help support each other emotionally. Those are all things of socialization. Even we learn language from a young age. We learn our language um, in a family, okay? And then emotional support, another function. Yep, exactly right. Um, emotional support. So if you're feeling down, hopefully somebody in your family will notice, right, and support you. Um, if you got hurt, right, or if you're feeling happy about something, they support you that way. So these are all functions of families. Um, so one, a really good and important um, recommendation is that people live alone before they create a family. And so here are some reasons here listed right there. Um, but this is actually not what everybody does, but it's recommended because um, of these reasons. Um, it'll help you to learn how to live independently. Um, you kind of find yourself, right? Um, and then you learn about managing your resources. We've talked about that in um, previous weeks. 
but you learn to manage things like your time, your finances, um, your work and life balance, those kinds of things. You find out who you are. Um, when you lived in a family, your family of origin, they, those, your parents and the people around you really shaped your thoughts and your ideas and how you functioned, right? So when you get out on your own, you kind of, you and you live independently. Um, you in like I've been saying, you kind of find yourself. You find out, hey, maybe I want to do this differently, or maybe I don't like um, doing what our family did, or yeah, I do like that. I want to keep that going. Um, but you need to know yourself before you blend with another person um, successfully, because otherwise you might have kind of a false foundation. Um, heading into a relationship and that can make it tricky to navigate right so really really important okay so that leads us to the topic of divorce so divorce is a legal separation between two married individuals and um, that'll be when it's actually a divorce it is um, it would be um, it would be a legal separation binding. So it would mean that the family um, was legally dissolved. It no longer no longer exists the way it, it did. So there are lots of ramifications of that. So for instance, the family normally wouldn't um, share the same, you know, housing. Um, they would separate. So um, and also things like children that needs to be worked out their finances need to be separated their property needs to be separated all of those things and um, the statistics are that about 50% of the marriages end in divorce so about half marriages end in divorce so again that goes back to really taking the time to find out who you are live independently um, even um, getting to know different people figuring out what you're job will be right all of these things enter into who you are um, there are of course marriage and uh, family therapists to try to work through issues that's really important um, any comments on divorce I know you guys have known about it any comments about it or any observations that you want to share out you think it's hard on kids have you known people that have gone through it Yeah, very hard on the children. I, I agree. So, you know, and a lot of times kids have, um, you know, think it's their fault. Yeah, very stressful. Um, really important for kids to understand that the issues are between the, the adults and the, you know, the kids um, can, you know, can make things stressful, but they don't cause the trouble. They just never do. And so a lot of times marriage and family therapists can help work through some of those things. Even after a divorce, they're very helpful for people. Okay, so your chapter is going to talk about way more on these topics. Um, we'll talk more about families next week. And in the meantime, any questions on this? Gives you kind of a foundation for what you're going to be learning about going into the next, into the next week. Anything? All right. So think about your families. Think about the things that your families provide as you read the chapter. Relate it to your, your life now. And then think about, will you do anything differently? What things do you want to keep the same? You know, what things have been helpful? What things have been hard? I remember doing that when I was young, too. Really important. It helps you um, so that when you launch, right, um, you have a foundation and you have, a, you have some idea of where you're headed. Okay? All right, so have a great week, and reach out to me if you have any questions, and good luck on the ACT. I wish you the best on that. Oh, thanks so much, Alexis. I appreciate that very much. So really important. It helps you understand society and, you know, what families are for, um, the, the purpose of them. They don't just, they didn't just happen. They, they exist for a, an important reason. Okay, have a great week, you guys. Take care. See you next week. Oh, yeah, you too. Thanks so much. It's supposed to be warm the next two days. I can't wait. Can try to get outside. You guys too?